so thank you for everyone for coming today. Uh, we have a great presentation from Alexandra, who is here from the BC Association of Aboriginal Friendship Centers, um, and we're really excited to learn about more. Um, Alexandra, would you like to do an introduction? Absolutely. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining this presentation today. Uh, and thank you to CoLab for providing the space for us to present on our recently released report, the Urban Indigenous Wellness Report, uh, BC Friendship Centre Perspective. Uh, in the hopes um, of this knowledge uh, and the principles and models uh, in this report be applied to the context of harm reduction, uh, as well as in an effort to decolonize substance use and harm reduction um, research and programming. Um, I also first want to acknowledge uh, the Lekwungen speaking peoples and the Songhees and Esquimalt nation from whose traditional and unceded territory the BCAAFC office is located and where I am calling from at my home office today. Uh, my name is Alexandra Purick. I use she and her pronouns and I am a settler of mixed European descent. Uh, I am the Indigenous Wellness Policy Analyst at the BC Association of Aboriginal Friendship Centers or the BCAAFC. I have been with the association since June 2020, um, at which point this report was in its editing stage. Uh, Cassandra was our health policy director who was unable to join me today, uh, led a lot of this work, um, as well as Magnolia Peron, uh, who was in this position before me. Uh, so I just want to acknowledge all of all the work that they put into this. Um, but I was also very honored to be a part of this work, even at the tail end. Um, and we at the association are very grateful to the Friendship Center community members for all of the knowledge that was shared in the development of this report. Let's get my slides in order here. Great. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, the BCAFC is the umbrella organization that exists to support the 25 friendship centers across the province. Um, so as part of the friendship center movement, BC's friendship centers are part of a national network united by the vision of a vibrant society that supports Indigenous peoples wherever they choose to reside. Uh, friendship centers themselves are community hubs that offer culturally safe and relevant programs and services uh, that include everything from family supports, education, uh, employment programs, health and harm reduction, and many others. Um, and Friendship Centers are the largest uh, service delivery infrastructure for urban Indigenous peoples. Um, as I just mentioned, there are 25 Friendship Centers located across uh, BC and over 100 Friendship Centers uh, lo located across Canada. Uh, it's reported that 78% of Indigenous peoples in BC live off reserve or in the urban space, uh, but this number uh, is estimated to actually be closer to 85%. Um, BC Friendship Centers have over 50 years of history supporting the health, wellness, and prosperity of urban Indigenous peoples and communities. Um, and yeah, we're very grateful to be here presenting today. Um, here is some, of it, some more information on the BCAFC's mandate. Um, as I mentioned, the BCAFC works uh, first and foremost to promote and support friendship centers, but also advise government uh, support and maintain communication within the friendship center movement and support the development of programs to improve the quality of life for Indigenous peoples living in BC. So over the past 10 years, the BCAFC has undertaken initiatives to support the work of BC Friendship Centers to better understand and address the barriers uh, that Friendship Center community members face uh, to their health and wellness. In 2014, the BCAFC established an internal health committee to provide input and recommendations regarding urban Indigenous health policies, programs, and services. In 2016, the BCAFC Health Committee proposed to develop an, uh, develop an urban Indigenous health strategy informed by the community to guide policy and programming. Uh, the committee expressed the need for a health report that speaks to urban uh, community needs as well as Friendship Center's capacity uh, to deliver programs and services. Uh, and in 2019, with funding from the Ministry of Mental Health and Addictions, uh, the BCAFC set out to identify existing and emerging, emerging needs, gaps, priorities, and recommendations 
to address wellness issues faced by urban indigenous peoples. Uh, this work provided an opportunity for the BCAFC to deliver an urban indigenous health strategy that is informed uh, by the Friendship Center movement in BC. And this resulted in the development of the Urban Indigenous Wellness Report, a BC uh, Friendship Center perspective. So each Friendship Center was provided the opportunity uh, for staff, frontline workers, executive directors, uh, board of directors, volunteers, as well as clients and community members to share their input and provide feedback. Different experiences, concerns, and needs were captured uh, through both service provider engagement sessions and service user engagement sessions in each friendship center. Uh, while the BCAFC designed a structure for the engagement sessions, there was opportunity for flexibility uh, based on what worked best for each individual center. So this model um, illustrates the approach taken by centers for service delivery. Uh, for example, community members are centered in the delivery of services, which is a key component of high quality care. Uh, Person-centered and family-centered approaches uh, ensure clients are considered experts in their own wellness and are involved uh, in planning and decision making. As a result, clients feel safe, accepted, and respected, uh, and develop trusting relationships with staff. Relationship building is an essential part of all service delivery uh, and is reflected in the engagement uh, and throughout this report. Uh, Non-judgmental and non-coercive strategies are integral parts to services provided. Uh, friendship centers meet the clients where they are by providing harm reduction and peer support. Many friendship centers also take an integrated, comprehensive, and collaborative case management approach to providing services, uh, working across cent uh, sectors and partnering, partnering with local agencies to coordinate the support services and interventions to clients, thereby creating a no wrong door policy. Uh, friendship centers have demonstrated a range of innovations in uh, service delivery where programs are delivered as part of a holistic basket of services that wrap around each individual client. Services are extensive, resiliency informed and strengths based, uh, which ensures an individual's family or community's capacities uh, are identified and upheld. Finally, uh, the uh, uh, holistic approach to wellness ensures that culture is foundational in service delivery and indigenous ways of knowing and being inform all programs and services. So uh, in the model here, you can see uh, the red uh, is who we're supporting, so the populations. Uh, the blue illustrates what we are supporting, which is wellness. And the beige uh, uh, ring there uh, is how we are supporting, so through programs and services. Uh, so in the development of this report, uh, the BCAFC engaged with youth specifically to learn how to best promote youth wellness and include youth perspectives for planning for future generations. Uh, this feedback was integrated throughout the report. However, uh, additional feedback specific to youth uh, wellness included uh, the need for more access to cultural supports and traditional ways of healing in the treatment process. Some youth identified that they were not told of or given the option of utilizing traditional healing or culturally re relevant treatment when trying to connect with health and wellness supports, uh, including harm reduction. Uh, they identified the need for a better understanding throughout the education system of the barriers facing Indigenous youth uh, to combat the misunderstanding that issues are inherent in youth and support youth accordingly. Uh, medical professionals who treat Indigenous youth need to have a better understanding of how to work with and support Indigenous youth specifically, as well as the need for staff to work with Indigenous youth across sectors and take earnest interest in youth mental well-being uh, and equate that, um, equate mental wellness to the importance uh, of their physical health and uh, their education. So the report's findings were compiled into five different themes. 
Uh, first being culturally safe, comprehensive, and quality service delivery, and holistic determinants of Indigenous wellness, then capacity building and workforce development, partnerships and collaboration, as well as increased funding. So themes include a vision, overview, priorities for action, regional considerations, and recommendations directed at various partners. Uh, some recommendations are supported by or have been previously identified in existing documents, uh, reports, and calls to action in order to build off of the good work that's already been done. So today's presentation will focus on the recommendations directed at both partners and stakeholders as well as governments. So in theme one, priorities and recommendations fall under the following vision. Uh, all urban indigenous uh, individuals and families, regardless of culture, geography, age, gender, or, the, or ability, to have access to a holistic continuum of culturally safe, essential, and specialized services and supports as part of a com uh, comprehensive health system, where friendship centers act as a single point of access to connect clients to integrated, team-based, wraparound services through collective, uh, collaborative case management approaches uh, and strengths-based interventions. So some of these priorities included uh, increase in mental health and substance use services, uh, especially outreach and counseling services, uh, advanced access to clinical and specialized mental health professionals, uh, improve and increase access to Indigenous specific detox and treatment centers, as well as to expand services and supports to be available 24 7, uh, notably for harm reduction programs. As for the recommendations for this theme, um, these are some of those from the communities for the provincial and federal government. Some of those being to promote quality care systems that make a continuum continuum of essential wellness services available and accessible for all Indigenous peoples wherever they choose to reside, uh, including outreach services, opioid-assisted therapy uh, programs, culturally safe uh, indoor overdose prevention sites and consumption sites, um, as well as change to legislative standards. Uh, further, to, endure, uh, to ensure a full basket of essential services is available and accessible so no Indigenous person has to relocate in order to receive the care that they need. So recommendations for partners under this theme uh, included things such as uh, for treatment centers to better support clients by working with friendship centers on transition planning to support effective dis discharge planning procedures, expand treatment to address underlying trauma and mental health issues, uh, address criteria for entry into treatment, for example, maintaining sobriety, um, and exit out treatment and adjust costs to make treatment accessible to non-status Indigenous peoples um, and those not covered by FNHA, for example. Um, another being hospitals to hire more Indigenous patient navigators to support Indigenous clients as they navigate the Western medical system, um, as well as all essential services to use principles of resiliency informed care to ensure programs and services promote healing from different forms of unresolved trauma. Service providers, healthcare professionals, and all other staff within healthcare facilities, uh, for example, including uh, administration staff, uh, hospital security guards, to be required to take skills-based training in anti-racism and cultural safety, and for all medical schools and institutions to require courses uh, in dealing with Indigenous issues, rights, and histories. Um, also, to promote and support traditional medicines and healing practices in healthcare, and recognize the expertise and value of cultural practitioners knowledge keepers and elders through the provisions of resources and compensation. As for theme two, uh, so holistic determinants of Indigenous wellness, this included the priorities of uh, things such as increase of affordable and adequate housing, um, improve the accessibility of transit systems, 
uh, as well to ensure cultural safety and anti-racist approaches in mainstream health and social services, and also to address stigma against mental health and addiction. So recommendations for the government under this section included um, supporting the establishment of low barrier shelters, transitions, homes, and second stage housing, to develop a strategy to ensure safe, readily available, and affordable transit and transportation services and infrastructure, uh, as well as to increase accessibility to Indigenous specific victim services uh, and programs and healing supports uh, provided to family members and survivors of crime, sexual exploitation, and human trafficking. To formally recognize responsibility to support efforts that provide urban Indigenous peoples with meaningful access to cultures and languages in order to reclaim and revitalize Indigenous culture, uh, cultures and identities, and recognize and protect Indigenous languages as official languages as well as to develop an action plan to renounce ideologies and instruments of colonialism, racism, misogyny within all levels of government and public institutions, um, as well as to educate Canadians to confront and eliminate racism, sexism, homophobia, and transphobia. So as for partners and organizations, some of the recommendations from uh, the community included, uh, the different communities, sorry, that included uh, community-based health and social services uh, delivery organizations to ensure culturally safe, relevant, and accessible services for Indigenous peoples by partnering with Friendship Centers for all programs and services for Indigenous clients, adopting cultural competency training requirements, and establishing cultural safety, uh, decolonizing, and anti-racist policies. Uh, another example is for housing agencies to audit landlords and property managers annually to track refusal of housing on the basis of discrimination was also identified by the community. And those are just a few of the recommendations. So also included in each theme um, throughout the report are promising practices from BC Friendship Centers. One of these, which is especially relevant to um, harm reduction, uh, is a project in development at Belcamp Friendship Center uh, in Smithers, BC. The All Clans Patrol is an innovative harm reduction approach to community safety and security that reframes outreach and patrol as nationhood building uh, through strengths-based, culturally founded service delivery that engages with all aspects of one's wellness. It is led by Indigenous community members and is grounded in Indigenous values and responsibilities of safety and security. Um, it also works to challenge old paradigms of service delivery by, um, for example, working from a complex ongoing stress disorder response uh, to address ongoing and compounding trauma, for example. Uh, All Clans Patrol also leans heavily into the expertise of youth to both ensure um, sustainability uh, for future programs, uh, as well as to meet the needs of youth in the community today. So for the third theme, um, which is capacity building and workforce development, um, has the vision of all friendship centers to build and sustain the capacity, qualified workforce, and infrastructure required within a system of quality assurance and accountability as a means to uphold their self-determination to develop, establish, and admi administer programs and services. Some of these priorities in this section included um, to build, expand, and renovate buildings and infrastructure to ensure safety, accessibility, um, as well as to increase office space to meet program needs, um, to implement more supports for uh, staff wellness, uh, to also engage in long-term strategic planning and emergency planning, um, and also to improve statistics and data collection for friendship centers as well. So a few of the recommendations for government under this section that we've pulled for this presentation are uh, to increase and support effective and well-funded opportunities and incentives to 
increase the number of Indigenous professionals working in healthcare uh, and social service fields, as well as to ensure Indigenous people to have support and equitable access to jobs and education opportunities and training, uh, as well as for governments to recognize self-determination and self-governance governance as an essential element in the delivery of culturally safe, relevant, and effective services for Indigenous peoples. As for partners and stakeholders in this theme, a few of the recommendations uh, included to promote leadership of friendship centers in guiding and determining service delivery models that best meet the needs of urban and off-reserve Indigenous peoples to recognize and compensate the expertise and value of cultural workers and traditional roles as part of the essential basket of services for urban Indigenous clients, uh, as well as to provide increased and flexible support to Indigenous students, particularly within wealth, uh, health and social services through scholarships, fellowships, uh, research skills training, uh, and mentorships to address the lack of access to these opportunities for urban Indigenous peoples. So for the fourth theme, um, under partnerships and collaboration, um, we have priorities that included uh, to increase collaboration in health and social services specifically came up in communities, um, to improve healthcare planning for clients through collaborative case management, to build referral networks, um, and to generally uh, further promote Friendship Center services and programs and make them known to the greater community. Some recommendations from this section uh, for uh, governments uh, included child, youth, and family services sector to ensure integrated and comprehensive care planning with Friendship Centers and Indigenous service providers. Uh, as well as correctional services sector to ensure intensive and comprehensive mental health addictions and trauma services for incarcerated Indigenous peoples and to ensure collaboration with friendship centers uh, and Indigenous-led organizations in planning and reintegration. Uh, to eliminate jurisdiction, ju jurisdictional gaps, uh, disputes, and uh, neglect that results in the that uh, result in the denial of rights and services for in urban indigenous peoples through better integration and collaboration among systems. As well, uh, to provide and mandate mandate staff and public servants uh, education on the history of indigenous peoples rights and laws, as well as training in cultural competency, conflict uh, conflict resolution and anti-racism and are held accountable so partnerships amongst stakeholders are genuine and authentic. For partners under this theme, um, recommendations that came forth were to uh, initiate inclusion and early engagement with friendship centers to foster reciprocal, genuine, uh, and mutually beneficial partnerships which operate within a framework where Self-determination is understood uh, and honored. Decision-making processes are decentralized and Indigenous protocols are respected. To also formalize networks and standardize frameworks for referrals, case management, and protocols for information sharing. Uh, this is especially important given the jurisdictional barriers that urban Indigenous peoples often face when determining what supports they are eligible for. Uh, to establish regional interdisciplinary teams uh, in each health region, in each health region uh, to support the critical connections among the various components and levels of the mental wellness system. Uh, and as well to develop action plans to build internal competencies and values to increase cultural safety and understanding of ongoing colonization and power dynamics. And finally, for theme five um, was increased and enhanced funding. And some of these priorities in this last, last section include uh, increased funding in areas such as mental health uh, and harm reduction, uh, as well as to provide long-term funding for programs and services um, in this sector, uh, to develop standard funding contracts uh, and 
improve, uh, improve funding application processes and reporting requirements uh, and increase flexibility of funding to improve cultural competency of funders as well. Uh, and also to reduce competition for funding amongst organizations. So um, provincial and federal government recommendations from the report under this section uh, included to create flexible and long-term funding for friendship centers to create, deliver, and disseminate programs, services, as well as promotion and prevention campaigns designed for urban Indigenous peoples, um, as well as core and sustainable funding, uh, as opposed to program funding, must be provided to local, provincial, and national friendship center organizations alike. Um, to acknowledge the fiduciary responsibility to fund friendship centers to provide a continuum of wellness services to address the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual harms caused by historical and ongoing colonization. Um, this, uh, to consider the unique funding needs of rural, northern, and remote friendship centers uh, and friendship center communities uh, who may have particular access needs given their distance um, from other service providers and organizations, uh, as well as to prioritize and allocate funding and resources in budgets to eliminate the social, economic, cultural and political marginalization of urban, urban Indigenous peoples, notably women, um, 2SLGPTQIA people, um, as well as peoples with uh, living with disabilities. Um, also to implement funding conditions that require mainstream organizations who receive funding for Indigenous specific programs and services are working in genuine, ongoing, and uh, um, collaboration with Indigenous organizations um, and compensating Indigenous organizations for their collaboration and establishing efforts to improve culturally, cultural safety within their own organizations. And finally here for um, my, my last slide um, under the last theme, uh, other recommendations for partners and stakeholders um, under this section um, include change funding requirements to be more flexible to the needs and realities of friendship centers, uh, such as allowing for administrative costs and removing restrictions around ineligible expenses, for example, uh, food security, uh, to develop reporting templates and offer innovative ways to report um, including semi-structured um, oral and or media formats to reduce administrative reporting, uh, reporting burden experienced by friendship centers, uh, to review uh, administrative granting processes, for example, applications reporting the evaluation processes, uh, to ensure cultural appropriateness and realistic timelines, um, and examine uh, engagement processes to better understand um, and reach uh, audi uh, the audience for uh, audience composition for callouts, um, as well as to create me mechanisms to ensure uh, granting processes and funding tables are indigenous led and allow for indigenous agenda setting. This should include processes to ensure appropriate and supported indigenous or, uh, participation on advisory groups and review committees. Uh, and a commitment to Indigenous inclusion within policies uh, and terms of reference, as well as to initiate a grant a granting cycle co-developed by Indigenous peoples that focuses on Indigenous specific issues, funds Indigenous-led organizations, and honors a process-oriented approach um, as opposed to an outcome-oriented approach, uh, as well to uh, adhere to the principles of uh, OCAP, ownership, control, uh, access, and possession, uh, as it relates to the collection of information in monitoring and reporting processes, as well as research. So that uh, is all, all I have. Thank you so much for uh, listening and uh, allowing us to present. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions right now, um, but I'm also available to connect with folks offline to 
help strategize how to implement these recommendations into your own um, organizations and sectors. Thank you so much.